Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to our weekly Wednesday live stream. I'm Peter, of course, and uh, today we're going to be talking about MSI Afterburner on-screen display or OSD. Uh, as you might remember, if you watch the stream regularly, uh, we did a stream a while back where I showed you how to overclock your graphics card with Afterburner. And uh, we asked you guys, what else would you like to know about the Afterburner software? And the most uh, requested topic was this, you know, how to use OSD and uh, specifically how to analyze your system performance uh, when you have, for example, bottled something bottlenecking your performance, but you don't quite know what. So Afterburner OSD will help you to do that. And I'm going to show you today how to do that. Um, before we start, however, uh, also, I want to uh, remind you guys, we're streaming on both Facebook and on uh, YouTube. So I'm trying to watch both chats here uh, at the same time. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them in the chat and I will uh, try my best to, uh, to answer them. Um, yeah, so um, I'd say let's get started. Um, by the way, I'm using uh, today, uh, I'm going to be uh, using a system which we kind of um, changed a little bit uh, because we want to uh, show you a, a scenario where you, uh, so here you see the system uh, on my uh, right side. It's an Aegis 3 based system, which is one of the newest, uh, latest platforms with uh, Coffee Lake um, CPU um, and Intel uh, B360 uh, based. What we did is, you can see uh, in bold there, is that we switched out the graphics card. Normally there's a, a GTX 1060 in there, uh, we swapped it out for a 950 to simulate uh, a system that is well quite up to date, quite good, but the graphics card hasn't been updated yet. Um, and I will be using this system to kind of show you uh, in a couple of different games um, how you can analyze the performance of your system. If you're wondering, you know, what should you upgrade first? What's uh, what's going on? Because it also matters not just your hardware, but also which kind of games you want to uh, have the best performance in. So uh, I'm going to be showing you that. Um, so this is the system we're using. Uh, also note that uh, the power supply is uh, 450 watt. Um, later, uh, there, there might be some references to that. Um, anyway, uh, I've also got this card here, uh, which isn't just for, uh, for its beautiful looks. Um, later on, we will be putting that into PC, PC as well and um, to show you the difference, what, what happens when you uh, upgrade uh, and then analyze the performance again. Um, for the rest, I'm using a really nice setup here, of course, with MSI gaming gear, uh, the GM70, and I've got uh, the keyboard, of course, and a really beautiful MPG 27-inch uh, screen with 144 FPS or Hertz. Um, so, yeah, uh, always a really nice addition to the setup. So, um, let's get started. I'm, I'm going to start, uh, start you out from the top. Uh, because some of you might not really know where to get Afterburner. Also nice to know is that uh, I think yesterday, or at least this week, there was a new version of Afterburner released. Uh, and I've already saw some questions in the chat that uh, some of you guys are saying, yeah, I've got some problems with Afterburner. It's messing with some of my software um, since the last Windows update or whatever. Always use the latest version. Uh, it will be more stable and they've uh, made sure. I've actually, I remember that this version that just released uh, was also made specifically more compatible with the latest Windows update because that was one of the major updates uh, not too long ago. So make sure you use the latest software. So um, we're going to switch over to my PC now. And uh, you guys can see my screen, of course, with the nice twin frozer on there, which is uh, my favorite card. Um, and so you can see here, um, let's see, I've already got something open. So I'm, I'm starting fresh basically. So this is a PC that uh, it has the latest drivers. Uh, it has the latest windows. So all of that is sorted. Make sure you always have that. And then next to that, um, we're going to download the latest Afterburner software. So uh, as you can see on my screen here, I'm on the MSI website um, and it's uh, easy to find MSI page Afterburner. But if you Google it, MSI Afterburner, it will give you this link as well. If you scroll down a little bit, uh, of course, you see here all the information about Afterburner. Um, but at the top, there are some tabs here. So features, tutorials. So we've also got some tutorials there if you want to know more about it. Uh, and downloads. And that's, of course, where we need to go right now. And why I'm taking you through this process is because uh, there are actually two components that you will install. The second one is really important if you want to use OSD. So I will talk you through it as we do it. It's actually uh, quite well, it's not that big of a software package either, so it's a very fast download. 
There we go. Uh, just double click it and we'll start installing. I'll close down the rest so that we can focus on what's going on. Always takes a little while before it starts. Hello. Hmm. Right, maybe I need to. Is it doing it? No. So maybe I need to do it again. I'll I'll just uh, extract it. Um. Well, just put it on the desktop. Normally I'm not a big fan of that. Oh, wait a minute, there we go. So it's just took a little while. Anyway, um, so do we want to install it? Yes. You can of course select any language you need. Uh, we're going for English, of course, because uh, that's uh, easiest for everybody to understand right now. So uh, I'll just close down what's in the back here for you guys. Um, here we go. So um, yeah, just click continue. Uh, of course, you need to accept the terms and uh, agree license agreement if you want to use it. There's nothing really bad in there. Um, then here comes the important part. So you can install two components. One is the MSI Afterburner itself, which is all the software where, for example, you can change the fan profiles, the clock speeds, the voltages, uh, and monitor that. But uh, the second one, Reva Tuner Statistics Server, that's the one you really need to um, uh, show all the uh, data in game, for example. So for the OSD, that's really important to install. So both of them are checked. Uh, both of them are quite small programs, so we'll just install them right away. Here we go. Because the statistics server runs in the background, and don't worry, it doesn't take up uh, that much resources, so you won't notice an impact uh, in, in the game. Um, but as you can see, uh, we also need to uh, select the language. This is already for uh, Reva Tuner Statistics Server. So this icon with the little monitor with the, the 60 in the corner, that's actually the OSD, uh, signifies the OSD. So let's say, OK, so this is the Reva Statistics uh, Server already. Yep, we accept the terms and conditions, and we'll just install it really quickly. And the nice thing about this program is also you don't have to reboot the PC before, you, you know, before it will start running. Um, correctly. Uh, no, we don't need to see the readme right now. Nope, just run afterburner, please. There we go. Okay. So, uh, as you can see on my screen, this is basically just, you know, when you install it fresh, there's nothing I've done yet. So this is exactly what you'll get when you install afterburner for the first time. Um, now you might be wondering, okay, so this is afterburner, where's this Reva statistics tuner thing? Um, if you look in the taskbar, um, there will be a little icon, uh, but you can also find it uh, later on. So, okay, here's what's important when you start with uh, Afterburner. As you can see, all the tooltips are still in there. Go to the settings, which is a little uh, gear here. And there are a couple of options here. It's, it's quite an expansive uh, menu, but what you want to be focusing on is um, monitoring, because here's where you can select which things you want to show up, uh, all the things you monitor, are also the things that will show up in, oh, I can't drag that separately, um, in the hardware monitor. So this is the real-time hardware monitor. So as you can see already, uh, it's recording the temperature of my GPU, uh, the usage, everything, you know, voltages, um, fan speeds, everything. Um, and this is exactly the data that it's going to use to show you in the game. So here you can actually select, in when you go into the settings and monitoring, you can actually select which things you want the system to monitor. If you, so if you think it's way too much that it's showing you and you don't understand half of it, you can just deselect the things that you don't want to display, like you know just clicking on the check mark. And when it's unchecked, it will no longer show up in your overview. Uh, however, we're pretty much going to leave this as it is. And the thing you want to focus on now is um, when you, for example, okay, which things do we want to uh, monitor? Uh, it's general system performance. So in this example, we're going to see uh, we have a system and we don't really know what's holding it back. You know, we're going to pl be playing some Far Cry 5 and we're going to be uh, doing some benchmarks and some CSGO. Um, and in CSGO, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy about this, the FPS. It's above 200, so, you know, that's fine. That's smooth enough. But in uh, Far Cry 5, I'm experiencing some, some lag and I don't really know what's causing it. So in this example, we're going to be uh, looking at the whole system because we don't quite know what's causing it yet. So uh, we want to know, uh, well, the GPU temperature is always nice to have. So uh, here's the check mark. You need to uh, select the item 
that you want to include in the OSD. And then you can click Show in on-screen display. So this means it will just show up with the temperature uh, wherever you, uh, well, you can uh, customize it later, but it will show up. Here's the next important thing, and something that they added, uh, I think, about a year ago or something. It's really cool, which is you can actually uh, have graphs like this also in the game. So if you want to monitor not just the, the, the number at that time, but uh, uh, for, I don't know how long, how far it goes back, but for a few seconds, want to see the actual, you know, if it goes up, down, uh, uh, the, the graph, you can also include that. So that's really cool. So um, in this case, uh, I think we want to focus on the FPS because that's, I think, you know, in this case is going to be uh, the problem. GPU usage we want to see, but that's uh, in a normal uh, case. Um, so we only need to see that in text. Uh, let's see, core clock, this is all the GPU. Uh, we could show it, might be relevant. Um, here we go. Then next up, because that's all for the graphics card, the GPU. So next up, I want to see what is the CPU doing. Now there's uh, these days, you know, you get a lot of cores, especially with the latest Intel. You know, this one I think has how many cores? It has, I think, uh, yeah, six physical cores. So that means with hyperthreading, it has 12 cores that it can be using uh, at the same time. Uh, games don't use all the cores yet. So normally you have a, a one statistic here that says CPU temperature or usage. And this is like uh, in general. So it will take the average of all the cores. I've tried that and it doesn't really give you a, a very accurate picture because these games will mostly focus and use uh, like four cores at the same time or six cores maybe. Um, so that means that the average will be lower than what, what you're actually seeing which cores the game are using. So that's why uh, I'm going to select each core individually and I'm going to be uh, uh, clicking the on show an on-screen display. So um, sorry about this, but this will take just a few seconds. Here we go. Because the usage will tell us how much in percentage based, how much of the capacity of this hardware is being used. And if the usage is less than 100% or at least not very high, that means that um, it's not working very hard. So that means that something is holding it back. So let's see, okay, the clock speeds, uh, we can display, but it's not very relevant for the moment. I don't need it. The frame rate is important. So this one was actually unchecked. And here I want to include both text and graph. So here you can, uh, you see the drop down menu where you can select either only text or only graph or even a combination of both. So I'm uh, going for only the graph because I don't want the screen to get too cluttered. This is already a lot of information showing. Um, and here you have a lot more um, options to customize how it looks. So even you can uh, group certain uh, values. You can uh, give them a specific color. Uh, you can uh, give it a, a specific name to so that you're, it's easy for you to recognize what, uh, what you're showing or what you're looking at. You can even log all the history to the file so that later on you have all the, the data somewhere in a file that you can load back in or analyze further if you would like to. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Very useful tool. And then in the next uh, tab on the right, you see on-screen display. Here you can actually um, also choose a few things. One of the things really easy, um, if you want to toggle it, I usually have this uh, set like this, Shift Q, so you can do a, a quick switch. So you can quickly, you know, if you're in a game and you, you notice something is going wrong and it's, uh, it's jittering a bit or you're having low FPS, you can quickly just uh, switch the on-screen display on. You don't have to have it on the screen all the time. And you don't have to leave the game to, to switch it on or off. So uh, this is also uh, very useful. Um, and you can even, if you want, you know, the real time, the, the, the time uh, of your system to show at the moment, it's not really relevant, but you know, there's all kinds of really uh, detailed settings here. Um, so for now, yes? Is that a save lock? Somebody's asking on uh, a save. Well, the, the uh, what do you mean save lock? Change because, lock. Oh, change lock uh, for the, yes. For Afterburner, um, I think, um, I'm actually not sure why it's not included. Oh, actually, no, that's that's the README file. You remember during the installation, I uh, unchecked the little box where it said, show me the README file. That's where it shows all the change, uh, the changes made for this latest version. So that's where you'll also find the change log. But I skipped it for now. So if, you, if you're interested in that, 
during the installation, don't uncheck the README uh, part, and it will open the change log for you. So thanks for that question. Um, OK, so now we're going to just click OK for now. So again, this is just vanilla afterburner. For the rest, I haven't changed anything. There's no overclocking going on here, no funny business. Uh, this is just purely what you get out of the box. Uh, you will notice, by the way, sometimes when you activate uh, this for the first time, the on-screen display, that it gives you this message. Some system components cannot be hooked right now. It is strongly recommended to uh, uh, restart the application. This doesn't mean you have to reboot the PC. It just means that it wants to reboot uh, both Afterburner and Statistics Server. So just click OK um, and uh, close it for now, which you can. It will remember the settings. Don't worry about it. Um, and then restart Afterburner. And then it shouldn't have a problem. Because what you need to remember is this program um, tries to uh, will hook into. That's why it's saying it, it's trying to hook into applications. Because it needs to place a layer over the application to show all the data on the screen. That's also why in the past you might remember that there were some uh, issues with, for example, PUBG. Um, because, for example, they didn't like that uh, the application Afterburner was hooking into their, uh, uh, into their process, into the software, to display these statistics. Because some uh, cheating uh, software also uses this kind of technology that it hooks into the game to try and manipulate the game files. Um, however, uh, I think since since then they've solved it, and it's very you know there's no need to avoid uh, Afterburner or, or the other software anymore because uh, they've isolated this type of software, which is purely uh, putting a layer over it, from other software cheating software that tries to manipulate it. Um, anyway, so uh, Afterburner running, um, you can see all the uh, all the data is being logged here. And then uh, I also quickly want to show you uh, from the uh, tab, um, maybe I can just do it here. If you search them for Riva Tuner Statistics Server, here you go. And you click on it. Yes, I want to enable and open it. Um, I actually was already running in the in the tab, uh, so in the in the taskbar uh, below. Uh, you can't see it, my, my desk is covering it right now. But it's a little icon uh, with uh, the blue monitor with the 60 uh, on it. And when you click on it once, this is what opens. And here's all the uh, options that you need to customize the look and feel and uh, of the um, of the OSD, the on-screen display uh, part. So, few things. Uh, there's a lot again, a lot of options here. Uh, I'll just quickly take you through the most relevant ones. Uh, start with Windows is one of them. Uh, for me, you know, usually I'm, I only use it in games. Uh, show on-screen display. Yes, that should be on because uh, you you want to do that. Um, application detection level. This basically, uh, you know, it can also display, for example, when you're playing a movie. Um, so just leave it on low for now. If it doesn't show up uh, in any game that you're playing, it it probably doesn't detect it. So you might want to up the detection level, and that might solve it. Um, most important here is uh, how it looks, because uh, standard, uh, as you can see, uh, it will show in the left top corner. Well, uh, luckily or unluckily for me, that's where we have a logo placed, uh, right there. So I will move it, and this is actually also quite cool. You can fully customize where it is by, for example, clicking on this uh, corner here. You can just say, I want it in the right top corner. No, I want it in the right bottom corner, left bottom. So you can fully customize that. Also, when you click on it, you can drag it, and you will see the numbers in the bottom, they are changing. What this means is, this is an offset. So you can say, I want it to be you know, not really in the corner, but I want it to have some space at the top and at the, bo and at the side. Um, leave that uh, space empty before the OSD starts. So I will also do that, because it will just make it a little bit more clear. So to pop it out, for example, 50. Uh, I'm not sure, I think this might, might be uh, pixel values. Oh, actually, I'm not sure why it doesn't work. 50. Ah, it doesn't want to work. Hello. 50. Here we go. So, as you can see, uh, it, it looks, it doesn't quite look uh, like this in the screen. This is like an extreme example of how it will look, um, but it will leave some space on the sides. Uh, here you can also uh, transfer, you know, how if you want it 2D, which is what it used to be, you know, very uh, pixelated um, font, uh, vector 3D uh, or raster 3D. At the moment we'll use this. I think this is also necessary to display the 
graph that we talked about. Um, and there's some a lot of other settings here as well. So uh, display fill, if you wanted to, you know, for example, if you can't really make it out uh, and you can't read it clearly, you can put a layer behind it, which will, uh, for example, you know, be darker. So that will make the uh, uh, yeah the font and and the text stand out more. The statistics. Uh, and you can also choose which colors you want it to be, for example. So now, I mean, my text is orange and uh, the rest is, uh, I mean, there it, is, it has a black edge around it. Uh, but we can also make it uh, yellow, for example. So as you can see in the little preview here, it will show up uh, yellow. Um, and the, the display fill, I will just turn off because I don't think we need it. Actually, there's no need. You can you can add like a it's a, it's a profile this, so you can add and, and save the profile. There's actually no need to do that. You can just uh, minimize it. It will go back down into the taskbar. No need to bother with it. W once you set this up once, um, and you don't want to change anything, you're happy with what you have. Uh, that's very useful. One more thing, by the way, is you can also zoom. So at the moment, um, when I start up the game, it will be relatively small the text, and especially for you guys watching the stream, I want it to be very visible. So I'm going to make it uh, a bit bigger so that you can very uh, easily read all the text and all the statistics. Yes, I think we have another question. People want to see some overclocking. Everyone's People asking, <laughs> can we overclock? How far can you overclock? Sure, I can, I can show you some things once we're done with this part. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, we all, and we also, also already did a stream about that. Uh, I think we also have some content about that if you, if you watch it. So if you Google MSI, how to overclock your graphics card, uh, I wrote a whole blog article, uh, step by step, how to do that and what to watch and what you should know. So uh, if you really want to try that, uh, you know, definitely give that a, a search. So let's, uh, let's get back into this. So um, like I said, our scenario right now is that we are, uh, well, I, I just bought, for example, a new game, Far Cry 5 in this example, and I noticed that my FPS wasn't running very, uh, very well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not j just going to start up the game. Uh, here it is. Just going to boot up the game. And I think, it should already start running the OSD, but we will see what happens. Is it loading. And if it doesn't, remember we set a, a hotkey so that we can very easily and quickly, I already saw something flashing up, here we go, on the screen you can already see it. Um, so it will already auto detect that, hey, you're running a game, so I need to start the OSD function. So I'll quickly just go to the menu go okay setting up profile I, I borrowed my co-workers account for this um, all right so we're in the menu now and as you can see at the top uh, I hope it's clear for you guys um, if not I can actually move it to another side as well there's a lot of text over it but um, you know, let's go over the things that you see here very quickly. So there's GPU, and we're showing the temperature. So we want to keep an eye on, is it not getting too hot? Uh, we're showing the uh, percentages. So this is how many percent of the GPU um, capacity it's using. And we want to be as close to, you know, 100%, because that means that it's making full use of your graphics power. And also the megahertz, which if you know uh, what it should be, it should be around uh, 13, 1400, I think, for a 950, which is a, what is it, three, three and a half year old card. So, uh, and it was also, it's, it's like an entry level uh, card, it was back then. So uh, it also has only uh, two gigabytes of uh, video RAM, which in this game uh, is well, just about enough, but it, I think it, it will come up short a little bit. And here you see all the CPU cores, and this is constantly changing, as you can see. Um, the reason why I also dragged in CPU is because some games are heavier on graphics card and require a lot of graphics power, which, for example, Far Cry 5 uh, does. Other games are more uh, depending on the CPU uh, performance and speed. Uh, that's why I also will show you later in Counter-Strike. That's a great example of a game that doesn't use that much graphics power. So it will be much more likely to be limited by your CPU frequency. Anyway, so we're in Far Cry 5 now. Uh, I'll also quickly show you which settings I've uh, selected. So video 
And we see here we're running full HD, of course, because that's uh, the limitation for the stream for the capture card. Uh, but let me tell you that for 950, full HD in, in this kind of game is already quite challenging. You can also see here at the bottom, the VRAM, uh, the game is telling me you're asking too much for this video card, because this video card has only two gigabytes and you're pushing over that. It doesn't mean that it will not run, but it, the game is already telling me, watch out, because this might give you some uh, performance issues. When I go to the quality, you can see uh, I've, I've selected the, pre, the, the ultra pre-setting. Uh, pre but everything is around two gigabytes. So if you look around, even the low setting is using about two uh, gigabytes of VRAM. Um, and the rest will add a little bit onto it, but not even that much. But let's go for Ultra because later on, we'll also test it with another card in Ultra. So then we can really compare the two um, side by side. And let's just start running a benchmark and see what happens. Also, by the way, under here, you can see the frame rate and here's the graph. Not quite sure if you can see it. It's almost some of the same color of the uh, background image there, but I think it should be clear once you start the benchmark. So here we're starting the benchmark. And watch closely what happens at the top right. So you will also see the overlay of the uh, uh, internal benchmark statistics, how many FPS, for example. It's dropping a bit, but as you can see, the GPU, I'm not sure if I have a mouse here, no, I don't. Um, it's 99%. So that means that the GPU really has to work, the graphics card is really working hard. And it's around 1380 megahertz, so that's around right for this card, that should be okay. 52 degrees is still nothing uh, to be afraid of. Uh, it can go much higher, you know, I think even the fans don't start spinning before 60 degrees. Um, Memory, uh, well, it's using you know the maximum amount because there's only two gigabytes there. So you see 1,956, so it's really pushing the limit. Uh, and the CPU cores, as you can see, it's about 28, 30 percent, 25, 11. Uh, some cores are higher than others because, uh, as I mentioned, it will only use um, I think around half of the cores in this uh, Coffee Lake six-core, uh, 12 thread CPU. And here it's finished. And uh, yeah, I'm not very surprised that we are having or experiencing a not so smooth gaming exp uh, gaming experience. Basically, um, I'll just get quickly get the uh, uh, OSD out of the way. So as you can see, I, I put uh, I think Shift Q to toggle uh, on and off. So as you can see, I can very quickly just get it out of the way if I want to. So my average FPS is 33, and I'm using a 144 hertz monitor. Yeah, it's not a pretty sight. I'm pretty sure you guys saw some tearing there as well, which also tends to happen when you have lower FPS. Um, so what we're aiming for is somewhere well, 144 if possible, but uh, 100 to be you know at least closer to 100. That's perfect uh, for us. So um, let's see. Yeah, I mean ultra graphics quality. We're kind of pushing the limits anyway, you know, for a card like this. But still, so. I hope it's clear for you guys here to see what was going on here, you know? So the GPU was constantly at 99%, really working hard, and the CPU was kind of, you know, picking its nose going, yeah, you know, I'm not even I'm not even bothered by this. So we clearly can see from this example that uh, this, the GPU is at its max, but the CPU can actually handle still a lot more. And the memory was also pushing its max, which the game is also indicating. Also here in the test results, you know, it still says, hey, you're using, or you're trying to use way much more VRAM than you have. So this is, are all reasons why in this game, for example, we get bad performance. So for this game specifically, uh, if you want better performance, in this case, up upgrade your graphics card, which of course, you know, it's quite an easy conclusion. Uh, and we're going to do that later on as well. But before we do that, however, I also want to show you uh, we're going to switch out of Far Cry 5. So, quit. Yes. And quickly check questions as well. Oh, is the, does it boost the graphics card performance? Not really. Um, actually, uh, you know, Afterburner can do a lot of uh, good things for your graphics card performance, but for that you need to do overclocking. Uh, but the OSD itself is just a, a monitoring tool, nothing more really. It just shows you, um, like it does in Afterburner itself, in real time, what your system is doing. Uh, so here you can also very clearly see, here's where I did the benchmark. 
So the GPU usage was 99%. And this is the cool thing as well about this overview. You can always look back like a minute or something. I think you can even customize how long you can look back. Um, and it can log it as well. And the temperature is slowly rising to almost 60 degrees before the uh, benchmark ended. Um, and a lot of other information here as well. Uh, clock megahertz, uh, let's see. Uh, here's the uh, CPU uh, temperatures and usage. You know, so there's a lot of up and down, but nowhere near the maximum. There are some peaks, but that's just, you know, when it has to do something uh, like load or something. Um, anyway, so let's start up another game because, like I said, you know, we have, okay, so we have Far Cry 5, which is, you know, one a, a quite demanding game uh, and a new game. So you will encounter some uh, FPS issues there if you have a card like I have in my system right now, an, an older card and an entry level gaming card. But what about a different game that's been in the market for quite a while, it's still quite popular, you know, CSGO, Counter-Strike. Let's boot that up. Um, so Steam, uh, Counter-Strike. Because there, um, it's a different story. Counter-Strike is not that much of a, a graphics heavy game. Uh, it still looks quite nice, but it's been optimized a lot. Uh, and it doesn't quite use uh, as many tricks, you know, graphical tricks to, to, to look beautiful. It's more optimized for speed and consistency, which is necessary for, for a competitive game. So uh, already the OSD is running, as you can see. So we're just quickly going to uh, go into the menu. I'll also show you the settings I'm using. Uh, again, I'll just quickly get OSD out of the way. Uh, video settings. So uh, I'm using full HD, uh, full screen, of course, and everything is pretty much set to auto, which is on high. So it will use some graphics power. Um, and motion blur is off because I really hate that. Um, okay, so I'll just quickly uh, see if I can find the game. Um, Deathmatch does too, whatever. So let's hope we can find the game quite soon. And in the meantime, I'll turn the OSD on again. So there it is. And as you can see, the system is just going. There's nothing going on here. And now it's having to load something, so it'll show something. Here we go. So the GPU is uh, being stressed a bit because it has to load all the textures, of course. So it's loading up the graphics memory. And here we go. Let's enter the game. All right, so uh, as you can see, the GPU is being used to about 100%. And we watch, when we watch the frame rate, we see we have way well over 100 uh, FPS. Still not perfect, uh, but it's quite smooth. However, check check out the CPU uh, numbers. Check out the usage there while I try and headshot this guy. Oh, here we go. Um, check out the, the CPU numbers. So there, remember the, the numbers uh, that you saw in the Far Cry 5? Those were like uh, what, 20, 30. But here we can see CPU core 1. Uh, I, don't, I can't use the mouse here, I'm trying to. But C CPU core 1 is uh, around 50, 60, even 70% sometimes. Uh, but you might think, wait a minute, this game isn't nearly as heavily, uh, you know, it's, it's quite old. So it's not nearly as heavy as uh, Far Cry 5. So what's going on here? Why is the CPU being stressed a lot more? That's because the higher the FPS goes, the more it will be uh, pushing your, your CPU or, or asking performance from your CPU. But you might also see that there are big differences. CPU 2 is almost at 0% usage, while CPU 1 is quite high in usage. CPU 3 is being used a bit, uh, CPU 5, you know, so there are big differences. And this is exactly the example where you can very clearly see the game is not using all the cores and threads that it has, which is something that uh, is uh, uh, defined per game. So future games will probably uh, use more of all the cores and the hardware that you have. But currently a lot of the games, especially older games, they won't use all the cores. So it doesn't matter how many cores you have for the older games, um, especially for CSGO, for example, the individual core clock per core is more important for your performance. So for this one also, what you will notice is that uh, if, you're, if you can overclock your CPU, uh, I don't know, maybe one gigahertz a bit, that will make a massive difference in competitive games like CSGO. You will get a lot more FPS just because you overclock uh, your CPU a bit. Also, you know, to optimize this kind of performance, uh, we can still, I mean, especially in competitive, nobody uh, uses the, the full uh, maximized video settings. So 
that's make it a little bit easier for our graphics card. You know, if you put everything on low, here we go. Um, yep, uh, bilinear, uh, even FXAA we're going to disable. Now this is going to shock the system a little bit because it has to change a lot of settings at the same time. So give it a few seconds. Hello, Martijn. Hello, Andrew. <laughs> Hello, guys. Martijn, Andrew. Um, Welcome to the stream. Okay, so uh, we see that the system has recovered. So uh, let's get back into the game. Resume. And uh, here we can even see at the top, look at that, 71, 67, 78. So if, you, if you're not bothered by the game looking not uh, at its best, but you only want a smooth gaming experience, even for CSGO at full HD right now, um, at 950 is plenty. And you can see also the, the FPS count, it's almost 300 FPS. That's pretty much like, th that's, all, that's over twice this, the, the amount that the monitor can even display. So that's, you know, that's smooth enough, that's way fast enough. Uh, that's more than you need, really. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, more than enough. But also, look at the CPU uh, core um, speed. So CPU 1, look at that, 92, 87, 89. 94. So, as you can see, the, the less the graphics card has to do, uh, because that's being stressed less now, the more emphasis will be put on the CPU cores in this game, in this example. So, this also means that if, for example, you're unhappy with your FPS in CSGO, upgrading your graphics card, unless you have like an integrated graphics or a really old graphics card, probably won't do that much difference, won't do that much to increase your FPS. So. If you want to uh, upgrade your FPS in a game like CSGO, you're way better off looking at, okay, what is my CPU doing? Can I maybe overclock that a bit? Um, can I upgrade within the same platform to a, a higher clock, uh, core clock speed CPU on the same platform? Or even, do I need to buy a new motherboard and a new CPU, which you know every generation, the, the clock speed gets higher and it gets more efficient, so you will get a lot more uh, performance out of it. So it's important for you guys to know uh, what to expect and, and what game, you know, depending on what game, it, it can very much be different what you will need to uh, update or, or, you know, what you need to um, um, yeah, make better or, or replace to get better performance. So to prevent that you guys buy a new, I don't know what, 1080 Ti for a ridiculous amount of money um, and you just want to get more FPS in Counter-Strike, uh, but you don't upgrade anything about your CPU, you'll be disappointed because you won't get that much more FPS out of it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, important to know. Okay, so now we've got that uh, down and we, we see the difference between those factors. Let's uh, quit CSGO. Uh, here we go. And let's um, normally, because what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upgrade the graphics card because we're focusing on Far Cry 5, we want better performance in Far Cry 5. So uh, what was there, the biggest bottleneck of the system was clearly the graphics card. That was being stressed out to the max, uh, the rest of the system was easily able to handle it. So uh, that's what we're going to do now. So to do that, normally we would recommend that you uh, uninstall the drivers. You can use DDU, driver, uh, display driver uninstaller to fully clean uh, the system before you install a new graphics card. That will all always give you the best results and uh, prevent any st stability issues. For now, however, uh, I'm confident then that uh, just replacing the graphics card, as long as it's uh, from the same uh, party, so in this case, Nvidia, so another GeForce card, it should be fine. Uh, I might need to reboot once or twice uh, to, to make sure it runs stable. But uh, other than that, should be fine. So uh, let's do that. So we can uh, switch back over to, while I shut down this PC, we switch back over to uh, the main view. Yes, there we go. So uh, this is, remember, this is the current system. Um, so the only thing we're going to change is the graphics card. Before we do that, just a quick drink. Um, so let's see. Uh, uh, by the way, don't remove your graphics card right away after you've been running benchmarks and stuff. It will get a bit hot. So uh, let it cool down a bit. Uh, I'm just going to go under the table and I'll put it, uh, the PC on the table. 
So you can see exactly what I'll be doing. So disconnect all the components and all the um, all the peripherals, everything. So as you can see, I'm using here it is the Aegis three PC, um, and uh, I've already did a little bit of work. Normally, if you if you want to uh, um, upgrade and and get into the system. You'll have to uh, unscrew a couple of screws here. I've already done that, so uh, it won't take that much time. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to take off one side. Uh, I'll just put it down on the ground here. There we go. And then I'll take off the top, which I think I believe goes something like this. Yep. There we go. Because for this system, you do have to kind of take off the sides and the top to be able to access everything. Uh, and then I'll just remove this one. And here's, of course, where you can see there's the graphics card. And it's really cool about the system as well is that it mounts it uh, upside down, um, but in a way that also it's way better for the fan um, bearings. They will last a lot longer this way. And an added bonus, it looks really cool as well. So um, all right, what we're going to do now is um, I need to disconnect the power connector here. Uh, and the graphics yeah. card is still a bit, uh, yeah, it's not connected anymore, remember, so don't worry, don't worry. Here we go. Okay, um, and there's a PCIe bracket here. card is still quite hot, so careful. And as you can see, quite easy. Uh, and this is the um, 950 uh, graphics card, which is really a good card as well, especially for competitive games. It's uh, still perfectly fine. Uh, let's put that here, if it will, I don't know if it will stand. Yep, here we go. All right, so, and now we're going for this bad boy. So this is the GTX 1070 Gaming X uh, 8G. So it also has a lot more video memory. And needless to say, um, it's a lot more powerful. Be careful, however, that uh, when you're upgrading in your PC, it also has a uh, PSU or power supply unit make sure that uh, more powerful hardware usually requires more power as well. So when you're upgrading to a new, like a 980, or sorry, a 1080 Ti from a 950, make sure your power supply unit can handle it or else you'll also come up very disappointed because the system will just, uh, either it won't start at all or it will uh, um, yeah, kind of limit the voltage, which also limits the uh, amount of performance you get from your card. So, uh, make sure to check that. On our website, we always show which G uh, or how much uh, wattage uh, a PSU is uh, required um, to function. So I'll just quickly place this here, align it, and click. Yep, here we go. Okay. And then uh, here's also the other card had only a one uh, six pin power connector, so also make sure you have the right uh, power connector. So I've already made sure we've got them here. Now comes the awkward part, so I'm just going to quickly turn it around because um, I need to get these connectors in here, which is quite a tight fit, with it because this card is also quite a bit bigger than, uh, than the last one. So let me see, okay, here's the 8 pin, there we go, and the 6 pin. And that's pretty much it. I mean, normally um, you would have to, again, fix a bit more screws uh, to save time. I'm not going to bore you guys with that, uh, but yeah. Um, so that's it. And now we've got a 1070 uh, Gaming X installed into this Aegis PC. So um, also nice about this, by the way, is this really is one of the latest ones because it also has, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, maybe a little bit close to the camera. It also has uh, the Optane module right here, the blue one. So uh, it has, uh, this system uses a uh, M.2 SSD for um, M.2 SSD for uh, Windows, for example, uh, but that's not, uh, usually that's not very big capacity. So for games and everything else, it has, I think, a two terabyte uh, hard drive in here, but that's a, a normal hard drive. So for game loading, it can be a bit slow, but this update module will really um, make that a lot easier uh, and faster to load everything. Sorry? Uh, oh yeah, it's also, yeah, by the way, you can also see, yeah, I'm, I'm just lifting it here because it's uh, at the back. But as you can see, uh, it's got a very sturdy 
metal um, hand carry, uh, uh, well, handle pretty much on the back. So that no matter, uh, so if, if you want to take this PC to your friend or to a LAN party, it's very easy to carry. Um, so yeah, it's also quite a nice thing that they added here. Anyway, uh, I'll put this one back under the table and connect everything back up so we can get to the performance and see what the difference is. Because of course, when you get a new graphics card, I don't know about you guys, but I always get very excited when I get a new one because, you know, way better performance, spend a lot of money on it as well. So I'm expecting a lot better performance from it. So let's quickly connect everything back. I'm also connecting the capture card, by the way, so it's going to take a little bit longer than normal. There's a few more things to connect. Uh, keyboard, mouse, network connection. There we go. And we should be pretty much almost good to go. Uh, let's see. Yep, the system is up and running again. Uh, so it's starting up now. Let's see if we can get a visual. Maybe switch a little bit too soon. <laughs> Still booting. Because remember, remember we um, we uh, we switched out a major piece of hardware. So that's the uh, graphics card, and we're back into Windows already. So um, I don't know. Maybe we can switch back now. See what happens. We're not getting any signal. Hmm. That's a disappointing. Um, right, maybe try to can you try to add that layer again? So we're experiencing a little bit of a difficulty here. Sometimes the uh, the switch and, and the capture card that we're using, especially when you're uh, switching between sources a lot, uh, doesn't really like that for some reason. So uh, at this point, we're not getting the, the signal, the feed of this monitor. So I'm just going to try and unplug it and plug it back in again. See if that helps. Here we go. I might have to see if I can if it gets. There we go. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. We can switch back to the. Yes, there we go. So we're back in our desktop. Um, and I haven't changed really anything, so I just no reboot panic. it. No panic, yeah, no. no panic, calm down, <laughs> no need to panic. It's all live, you know, so we test this, these things a lot of times and every time it goes right when practicing, but during live stream, everything, you know, it's Murphy's Law, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Anyway, um, I'm glad we got it up and running again. Just to be sure, like I said before, uh, I've just, I only swipped, uh, swapped out the graphics card, so I didn't update the drivers. Still using the same drivers, no panic, but usually it's, it's good to uh, uh, let the PC boot once and then just reboot it just to be sure so that it can um, uh, yeah, make sure everything is running correctly. So I'm just going to quickly do that now as well. Shouldn't take long uh, because, <laughs> because we're using, uh, we are using uh, the M.2 uh, SSD and uh, Optane. And of course, when I say that, it might take longer, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so I'm getting... Uh, <laughs> Can I get a 1080? No, unfortunately. Well, it depends. If it's if it's available in your country, then yes. Uh, can, a, can a GTX 1050 give better performance uh, while playing Far Cry 5? Um, difficult to say. You know, it depends on which settings you choose, uh, and um, there's a lot of benchmarks you can find. So maybe if you just Google, uh, you know, media do a lot of tests like that. Maybe if you Google uh, GTX 1050 uh, Far Cry 5 benchmarks, you'll most likely find some data on people who have done this kind of testing. And so you get an idea of what to expect. Uh, because yeah, that's a question I also very often ask myself when there's a new game coming out, 
uh, okay, so uh, I have a 1070. What can I expect? You know, how will it run at uh, 1080p and at 1440p at 4K? Um, when I put everything on ultra, do I need to put everything on low? Uh, that kind of thing. So there's a lot that uh, you can uh, you can test about that. Uh, my time. What monitor am I playing on? I mentioned that at the beginning of the stream, man. You're not paying attention? No. Um, so it's, this is an MPG monitor, so I'm not quite sure, but you guys can maybe see the nice uh, RGB uh, effect here as well. Uh, kind of uh, running in tandem with uh, the RGB effect on my uh, on my keyboard here and on my mouse even. Um, so the most important thing about this as well is it's 144 uh, hertz. So that means it gives a very smooth image if your graphics card can support it in game. So there's where the FPS comes in. Okay, so we're back in uh, our uh, desktop. And uh, let's just boot up Afterburner again. Um, again, it's, it's remembered all the settings. Uh, however, now you'll be able to see, it tells me, I've got a GTX 1070 installed instead of a 950. So that's quite a big difference. Um, okay, so I haven't touched anything else yet. Uh, the OSD will also run. Uh, I've got um, Revo Statistics Sooner uh, server running in the background. So um, let's get right into it, right? I mean, we've got a new graphics card. I'm all excited. Uh, Far Cry 5, that's the game I want to improve in. Let's see what we get. You know, I just upgrade the graphics card, nothing else. What's the difference? Let's see what we get. I still have an old 970, works okay. Yeah, uh, funny, funny story. I was actually preparing this stream uh, and I was uh, using a 970 and the performance was actually still quite okay. Um, so I wanted an extreme example. So I actually had to go back to a 950 to get uh, a very clear um, difference in performance and, and to show you that, you know, what happens when you really have your graphics card struggling versus when uh, your graphics card is, you know, just uh, good enough and, and on par with the rest of the system, basically. So yeah, the 970 is still a really good card. I agree. I used to have one as well. Can you maybe show the keyboard? I have a lot of people asking oh. what keyboard is that. They said yep. that they like the RGB LED. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, GK80. Uh, so we also did a stream about this a little while ago. I think it's this keyboard was launched uh, in February, if I'm correct. Um, and it, it can take a while in some countries to have like, uh, you know, uh, every country or most countries have their own keyboard layout. Um, and so for some countries it might uh, arrive later than others, uh, but this should be readily available now. Um, anyway, so here you can see uh, it's a very nice, it's a mechanical keyboard, uh, uh, aluminum base as well uh, with the floating key design. So if you look on the side here, you can remove the keys and then it's very easy to clean as well, but it also makes it very sturdy. Um, well, the RGB, of course, on the sides oh, we as did well. A stream about that, yeah, we did the stream about anyway, and, and I've connected search. my mouse here as well, so I don't have to do that. Uh, you know, connect it on the bottom of the PC. So uh, yeah, if you search that on our channel, you you'll definitely find more information about that. Uh, I did a whole stream on it. Okay, so OSD is on again. Um, it's showing uh, what's going on. Uh, again, the system is kind of idling because, of course, we're uh, not really doing anything. Um, let's just check if the settings are still the same. So, uh, okay, now we've got a 1070. Also in the, bo in the bottom here, you can see uh, it shows us that we have eight gigabytes to play around with of uh, video RAM, and it, it's only asking still the same number. Actually, Far Cry 5 doesn't ask that much uh, video memory. Uh, I'm surprised. We'll also do the refresh rate. We'll put it on 144, since the monitor we're using uh, is supporting that. Um, and let's see, then, uh, oh, Wait a minute, my screen is flashing a bit. Yes, I want to keep these settings. Still, the ultra, uh, sorry, the settings uh, of the graphics settings are all on ultra. So um, just to ensure that we've got the exact same settings so we can compare it to what we had before. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get benchmarking, shall we? So let's start a benchmark, here we go. All right, loading. Let's see if it runs. All right, so here we go. So right off the bat, we can see that um, we get a lot more FPS. Uh, on the right side, we can see that it's about average of 90, 80. Well, now it's dropping a bit, but um, you know, above 80, which is way closer to the 100 uh, FPS that we want to be at, but still not quite there. 
Um, and let's see. What's up? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody is um, asking, um, what are dangerous temperatures for the CPU and GPU? Uh, good question. Very good question. Um, also depends, right? Also covered. Yeah, it depends. But in general, uh, for a graphics card, anything under like 80 degrees is fine. I mean, if it, if it starts uh, smelling, if, yeah, then if you it's have a problem. If it starts smoking, then you know <laughs> it's it's not good. No, but in all in all seriousness, um, if you have around 80, anything under 80 degrees for a graphics card is okay. If if it's at 80 degrees all the time, you might want to up the fan speed a bit so uh, it will um, it will cool down. But we, for example, we've set our uh, zero frother feature on our graphics card to only start the fans above 60 degrees. So that already tells you that even you know 60 degrees for us is peanuts for for the graphics card is peanuts. It's nothing to worry about. Um, so the more the hotter it will get, the faster the fans will spin. For the CPU, I think uh, even 90 degrees uh, under 90 degrees should be okay. Uh, nothing to worry about. So another question. Yes. Uh, is it possible because you now on the screen you have those colors for the CPU or, or the GPU, you know? Yes. And it's all yellow and it says like 55 degrees currently. Yeah. So 54, 55. Yes. 54 again. Yes. Anyway, to change the colors if they hit like 80 or 70. Very good question. Uh, actually, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, for as far as I know, I think they are static colors. So in uh, th this, you would do by the way in. Yeah, this is the, the color that we set, uh, if you remember, in uh, Riva Statistics so you Tuner. Can trigger them? I do, I'm not sure. Um, so that might have, that's maybe like an advanced option. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I know that you can change them uh, like statically, like now. They're all yellow, which we set in the beginning, if you remember. We changed it from orange to yellow. So that's why they're all showing up in yellow. And the groups that you can see on the right, so all the CPU, for example, that's what bluish, uh, and then the CP, uh, GPU in memory, that's like green. Um, so those colors you can also change uh, uh, to, to whatever you want and the frame rate. But I'm not sure if it will react on what's going on in the system. That's actually a really cool um, uh, suggestion. suggestion, yeah, maybe an idea for the future. Keith still wants to overclock. Keith, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that because. At the moment, um, during our benchmark, and I'll, I'll just do one again. Uh, before I do it, by the way, you can see average FPS already up to 89. So uh, the last one was 33 average. So that's a huge difference already. But still, we can see some pretty big dips here uh, in the graph of the FPS and the current results. Why do we get these dips? I'll tell you why, and I can do that when doing another benchmark, because we need to just pay attention to what it's doing while it's running the benchmark. Because that is exactly why you have OSD, so you can view in real time what is going on. So if anything is uh, uh, stopping your system or bottlenecking it, what you're showing on the screen will be the best indication you have to tell you what's going on. Uh, why is it dropping, for example? So here we can see the GPU 98%. That's what we want to see, you know? It needs to be uh, as close to 100% as possible. The CPU uh, already, you know, a bit higher numbers than before. That's because, the again, remember, the FPS is now a bit higher. So the CPU will be a bit more stressed, but still, you know, it's even under uh, or around 50%. It's not bottlenecking the system at all. So still for this system, what is bottlenecking it at the moment is the graphics card. But you might notice right now, Look at the uh, percentages dropping, 88, 93. That's not a near 100%, that's not 98 or 99%. So what is going on here? Because clearly, if we look at the CPU as well, it's the graphics card that's the limiting factor at the moment for our uh, performance. So, but the graphics card itself is not being utilized at 100%, but it should be because that's what will give us more FPS, right? So what's going on there? Here's where, if you remember, I told you, uh, when you upgrade your graphics card, also look at your power supply unit. Because if it cannot handle it, it will, uh, well, basically limit your graphics card and the power it can use, which also in turn limits the performance you get. So in short, that's kind of what's going on here. By the way, uh, without changing anything, 91. So 
there's also some variation sometimes in benchmarks. Uh, I think now the system had everything loaded and, and you know the, the textures and stuff like that, so it might be second time around that it's uh, a little bit better. But still, we saw a dip, right? And I think that corresponds with this dip right here. So what was going on here? Really cool thing, you can switch out uh, of the game then and go into Afterburner, the hardware monitor. And here you can see, um, this is where, for example, this, this was the first benchmark and this was the second one. So here uh, we see, again, uh, dropping the performance at some point. Um, if we scroll down a bit, uh, during my overclocking uh, stream a few months ago, uh, this was also something that you had to watch, which is, is your card being limited by anything? Uh, and that can be, is it being downclocked because it's getting too hot? So that's a temperature limit, for example. Is the power limit set too low so that it runs into the power limit it has? Or is it, for example, voltage? And there's a little bit of a difference between power and voltage. But as you can see here, there's a big, uh, well, it's basically just one or zero. There's nothing in between. So either it is not, with zero, it's not being limited. And if the value shows one, that means that it's actually uh, impacting performance a bit because it has to limit the amount of voltage that's being given to the card. So we can see here clearly that, okay, apparently um, our uh, 450 watt power supply is maybe not quite enough. It's near it because we see it's near 100% usage most of the time, but still at some point it will impact performance a bit. There's actually something we can do about that because at the moment, Afterburner shows you and allows you to change a lot of settings, which also include core voltage and power limit and temperature limit. And as with overclocking, I'm just going to show you a little trick and it, it will make a difference is when you go into uh, properties, you need to enable these functions because at the moment you can see, for example, core voltage is it's grayed out. Uh, I, I can't edit this. Uh, I can change power limit a bit probably. Yeah, there we go. But uh, the voltage is where is what's limiting it, right? So that's really what we want to touch here. So go into settings, general, and then uh, you need to unlock voltage control. Standard MSI is fine. Just uh, leave it uh, what it is. And also unlock voltage monitoring because we want to make sure that uh, we get a, a good reading, which is right here, uh, the, the millivolts. Because when I enable this, uh, force constant, constant voltage for now is not needed. That's really for overclocking. When I enable this, you'll see suddenly it's reading the value. Also, when I, when I do this, it's saying, you know, to make sure that it's stable, we need to restart uh, Afterburner. So, sure, restart it, it's very quick. There we go, that was it. Now, however, the slider for core voltage is unlocked. Don't be scared, especially with new cards. Older cards, you, you need to be careful with this because it, uh, when you um, apply a higher voltage, it will actually start using that on the card. And the card itself doesn't have a protection mechanism. But uh, I think 700 series, uh, 900 series, and 10 series, for example, anything from the past mm, probably five years will have a built-in protection as well. So if you go too far with the core voltage, it will limit itself. So no need to be worried about that. So usually with overclocking as well, what I say is just drag it all the way to 100%. Uh, also power limit the temperature limit because ba basically this means that your card, you will give it all, uh, all the resources that your system can offer. Still it might be limited by, the, for example, your power supply, but at least uh, you're, you're getting everything out of the system that's possible for the moment and then apply. Uh, fan curve, by the way, if you if you notice your graphics card is getting hot, you can always you know auto and uh, uh, or put it off auto, and apply a fan speed that you're comfortable with, uh, so it reaches the temperature. I always use uh, just put it on uh, auto because uh, yeah, it will uh, ramp up the fan speed if needed at all. But at the moment it's 47 degrees, which again I don't think the fans are even spinning right now. 60 degrees, then they'll start. So uh, we've put everything on uh, maximum here. We've uh, applied it and uh, we've got everything running. So let's get back into this game. And um, let's see uh, if it makes a difference. So I'm going to go back into the menu and run the benchmark again. And uh, let's try to, again, keep an eye on the top right on the OSD and see what happens. Because again, now it has more voltage, more power to play around with the card. So theoretically, it should uh, experience less limiting than before. And I do mean theoretically, because it doesn't always work that way one-on-one. -on -one. Trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> so 
So uh, again, you know, 98%, I saw it dip to the 95% just there. So again, that's what I mean. It's probably still experiencing some limitation. 95, 96, it's staying nice near the top, 97, 98. Later on the benchmark, the last time around is where we got the drop. Here we see some again, 91%. 87, 84, see, so we're still getting a drop. The question is, is it as much or more or less than what we had uh, before? I still see an average of 90 FPS, so that's okay. That's, uh, that's nice, 91. I think in the last benchmark as well, we had around 91, so it's, it's around the same. Um, I didn't quite check the number of frames rendered here, but I, I, I would wager that this time around it's a little bit higher. It's not that much higher. Um, anyway, so now we've optimized the performance as much as our system can, and we got 91 FPS. If you want more, you know, it's very easy, uh, because if we uh, down the settings a little bit uh, to, for example, high, uh, this will probably push us over the average of 100 FPS average easy, uh, and, and towards the 144. Um, but let's not do that right now, because it will take, again, some time. Uh, but let's go and analyze and see what happened, because are we still being voltage limited? So here we see uh, the readout uh, again, you know, we see there's a drop uh, to 80% around that uh, course. And if we scroll down to a voltage limitation, then yep, it's still there. So if you really want to make uh, all the use of the power of the 1070 that we just put into the system, theoretically what we need to do is to replace the power supply unit with a higher uh, higher wattage one, uh, one that's rated higher. So uh, in this case, and especially for uh, an Aegis PC, uh, it, that's difficult. Uh, you can actually replace the power supply, but it's a very uh, small size, so it's not uh, like a standard power supply that you can fit in there. But if you have a normal PC that you're just upgrading and swapping components whenever you need to, um, usually there's enough, there's plenty of space to swap out the power supply unit for a bigger one, a better one. So this is pretty much all we can get. But remember, we started with like, what, what was it? 33 FPS, and now we're up to 91 on average, on ultra, everything on ultra. So uh, that's pretty impressive already. What about Counter-Strike, by the way? Because remember I told you guys, I showed you guys uh, with the 950, uh, all the visuals uh, on high and, and running on high, it was still, we, we got around, what was it? 144, 150 FPS. Um, and when we put the graphics down, we even got uh, up to like what 300 FPS. So that was uh, well, we didn't really need to upgrade. But since we since we did it anyway, and I think most of you will also play more than just one game, right? I mean, let's face it. Um, so let's let's start up CS and see what's going on there. Prepare to launch. Come on, buddy. Oh, and by the way, because it's voltage limited, that also means that um, I could try overclocking on this uh, graphics card, but I don't think we would get much out of it because it's already being uh, limited by the amount of power it can draw at the moment from this system. So in this specific system, it's n there's no, no not much use in trying to overclock it. Um, so. Uh, to do that, we would need uh, a more powerful, a more beefy power supply. Um, okay, so this is uh, staying on top. I don't know why. <laughs> Probably because I clicked somewhere I shouldn't. Yeah, here we go. All right, so uh, we're back in CS. Uh, let's just put all the settings back on, uh, well, you know, on high, on auto. Because, you know, we, uh, we upgraded to a 1070. You know, should be able to handle everything easy peasy, right? Uh, auto, no, actually, let's just do 16 times. Make sure we've got everything on uh, on the highest. Apply. Um, also, 1080p again, so full HD. And let's find a game. Uh, oh, deathmatch, dust two. Here we go. So let's see what happens. Um, also, by the way, if you know CS, uh, probably the reason why we had uh, 300 FPS last time around. It's also because uh, FPS maximum amount is set to 300 at the moment, but I can change that uh, in the console. So let's see what will happen. Loading in. 
He Dutch, right? Yeah, I'm Dutch. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. I have a really old MSI GeForce 4 TI 4200 a AGP. Oh. Still works in Half-Life. Yeah. That really, that old hardware sometimes can surprise you how well it still runs. Uh, well, older games as well. I mean, Half-Life isn't one of the latest games. So, OK, we're pretty much loading in. Here we go. Let's just get in there. All right, all right, all right. So what we can see is we get around uh, 200 and uh, towards the towards 300 FPS mark quite easily, as you can see, comfortably. And this is everything on high. But if you watch at the top right, the GPU, the usage, it's well, around 60 degrees, not bad, 61%. Um, and everything is on high, remember? I've put everything on the highest setting it can possibly be. It's only using 66% of the 1070. Um, memory usage, not even one gigabyte. I mean, again, uh, Counter-Strike isn't that hungry on graphics power. But the CPU, look at that, 88% uh, on Core 1. Core 3. 83%, and then uh, Core 9 is all. It looked like it's hammering the crap out of Core 9 as well, with uh, in the 90%. So again, you That's can see. AI. It, it may, I, no, there's no AI. I don't think. Uh, or actually, yeah, there is a bot in here, or a few bots, but it shouldn't be that big. The point is, the more FPS you get, the more it will uh, be drawing from your uh, CPU. So uh, we're actually FPS max. Let's just put it 999 and see what happens. Not that much. Probably because um, there's actually not, not that much use getting way higher FPS than this. But still. So uh, yeah, here we go. There's above 300, a little bit. Um, but you know, again, uh, as we did in the beginning, uh, m most pro players, and if you're really into the pro scene or you know the competitive scene, you won't be putting all the visuals on, um, on their fullest effect. Whoa, what's going on here? Oh, here we go. Okay, so um, um, let's see uh, how many FPS we can actually get. So uh, just to make sure that we isolate only the CPU, right? Because uh, we don't want um, we don't want the GPU to influence any of the performance. So apply everything uh, on low. Only thing I left on is multi-core rendering, which is of course only for the CPU. So don't turn that off. Um, definitely want to want to keep that on. All right, I think we're almost. Hello, here we go. Okay, so we're back, and let's see what's uh, what's going on. So wow, okay, so we did get a nice bump. We're above 400 FPS now. Holy crap! Um, I still have to see a monitor that can actually display 400 FPS. I don't know if that's going to be a thing, um, but you know. This just shows you that the GPU, even though you have it uh, a very powerful one, for example, it can still influence your performance a bit. Um, there we go. But um, yeah, I mean, anything above 200 FPS, I would say, is fine. Uh, is, is smooth enough. Uh, anything else is bonus, is extra, but it's not really critical or required. So, uh, and the can GPU. Can you pay attention to the game? <laughs> yeah, the GPU, as you can see, it's 40%. So it's really picking its nose right now. It's really going. Yeah, uh, you, are you gonna are you gonna play anything serious or what? So let's see if I can uh, pay a little bit of attention to the game here. I can't hear the guys talking. By the way, I don't, I'm not wearing a headset. Remember, so I can't hear people around me. Oh, ah. let's see. Oh. Maybe they're watching the stream. They know where you are. Yeah, yeah, stream sniping. <laughs> Uh, probably not. I don't think uh, uh, he, he wants none of that. But yeah, I mean, if you watch the performance as well, it's, it's the CPU basically that's limiting the performance right now. That's really deciding how much uh, FPS we, we are getting. The GPU really doesn't have anything uh, to do with it anymore, especially at the uh, lower settings. Wow, I'm, I've got the reflexes of roadkill right now. <laughs> Uh, all right. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, there's somebody there. Hey, got him. I'm not quite as good as uh, what is it? Scream. They know me for my one taps. There we go. 
you're, you're ten tap. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, they know me for my uh, many sprays. <laughs> Spray and pray, pretty much. Oh, nobody here. I hate it when they spawn in deathmatch. You know, they spawn behind you, especially if you if you can't hear them. That's really. I'm so bad right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe overclocking you will get better. Yeah, <laughs> no overclocking doesn't do it. You can't overclock skill, guys. You cannot do it. Uh, if, if if you could, trust me, I would have done it. Um, by the way, uh, nice question for you guys. Um, we play games every now and again on stream. And uh, of course, uh, we hope it's entertaining to see whether we do really well or we fail. But how would you guys feel about um, maybe, uh, for example, in games like Counter-Strike that allow it, uh, if we could um, open up a server or whatever and uh, let you guys play with us while we're on the stream? Is that something that you guys would like uh, or not? Uh, because yeah, we're thinking about it, but we don't really know yeah, if you guys are, are into it, if, if it's something you guys would like. Uh, so let us know in the chat you know, if you would like to um, carry my uh, my my ass I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that but you know because because obviously um, you know I'm not the best at this game but it could be fun so uh, let us know if you guys like that maybe even some PUBG or whatever you know um, all right there I go I'm terrible this guy was still shooting through the wall at a guy that was already dead <laughs> Come on, you kidding me right now? Oh. All right, well, um, I think the message is clear, right? So when you want to upgrade and, and you, you feel like, I don't know what's limiting the system, Afterburner OSD is really something that can help you figure out what is causing uh, performance issues or what is choking up your system. And it can give you a pretty good idea of what you will need to do to improve that. Um, also, like I just showed you as well, when you upgrade your graphics card, for example, or any component, basically make sure your system can support it fully. This is just to prevent any uh, kind of um, disappointment because there's nothing more disappointing when you buy a really awesome graphics card like a 1080 Ti and you put it in your system and it can't handle it or it's you know it's it's only uh, using like 50% of its power because that's just throwing money away. You know nobody wants that. So make sure that your system can handle it. Uh, also make sure that you uh, know which game you want to optimize. You know, if, you, if you're having exper uh, experiencing not so smooth gaming in whatever game title, make sure you know what is limiting it in that game title, because then you know what you need to do to improve that. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Um, if you guys have any other questions, let's see quickly, check the chat. Uh, last GPU, SLI, <laughs> yeah, if you're going to SLI, by the way, uh, also make sure that the game that you're using uh, is supporting SLI. It's very game dependent. Some games, uh, let's just get out of the game because it's distracting me. Um, and also I'm wasting space in the server. Nobody likes an AFK or let's face it. Um, also, make sure that, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the SLI, that the game can support it, that it has an SLI profile. Because also, a lot of games these days uh, don't support SLI or multi-GPU anymore. So, uh, basically, uh, our advice is always, if you have the possibility to go for one uh, very powerful graphics card versus two less powerful ones, um, you will have the better experience with one very powerful graphics card, usually. Because all of the games, will support one powerful graphics card, but you might run into issues with some titles or some, some stability issues if you're using multiple graphics cards. So the chance is just higher. Um, so basically, if you want to be sure that there's going to be uh, uh, as few issues as possible, go for one powerful graphics card. Um, okay, any other questions? Let's see. What, hello. What what MSI is the greatest? I I don't know what you uh, what you mean, Keanu, but 
I think in, in all categories of our products, we've got really great products. Uh, it just depends on uh, what you want, really. So um, we've also got a lot of content on that. Coil wine, um, yeah, that, that sometimes is an issue. Um, I think starting from the 900 series, actually, we did uh, some improvements on our, especially our graphics cards, that minimizes coil wine, so you should experience a lot less of it. And if you experience it at all, it also tends to happen in, uh, for example, loading menus. So during gameplay, it shouldn't really happen. Or in high FPS counts. So for example, CS, which as you saw, we got like 500 FPS. Um, then you might, um, if you will have any coil wine, it's more likely to happen in those scenarios. So if you're running games like The Witcher or Far Cry, you know, where um, you have uh, around 100 FPS or something like that, probably you won't uh, have any coil wine to speak of. Um, I get lower FPS than my friend who also has a GTX 1080. Uh, well, Sahil, that's uh, uh, a great opportunity for you maybe to use this OSD and to try and find out what is causing the difference between you guys. Uh, he might have, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a better uh, CPU. It also depends which game. Uh, CS, for example, Counter-Strike, uh, doesn't really matter which graphics card you have uh, as long as it's at a decent level, but anything from this generation, from the 10 series, for example, should be plenty. So it matters way more your, your memory and your CPU performance. So um, using OSD, you can actually try and find out, hey, you know, where am I losing the FPS versus my friend? And where, you know, what do you need to do maybe to uh, get to the same level or even get past him, of course. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing that many questions anymore. So uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this stream. I hope this was useful for you guys as well. You know how to use uh, Afterburner OSD now. Um, remember, there's also a lot of uh, content on overclocking. Uh, like I said, on this system, there wasn't post, much use. I'll post another article. Yeah, uh, uh, Eric can uh, put a link in the chat for you guys uh, about the blog that tells you about the, the overclocking features and how to do it step by step. So if you're interested in that, Definitely read the blog, it will take you through it. Um, next week, by the way, as you can see here, uh, we will have Johan uh, presenting the Optics uh, MPG, so these monitors, uh, but then you know the other side, if you could see it, it's got LEDs in the bottom as well. Yes, a monitor with LEDs, but because it uses GameSense, so it will actually uh, uh, tap into the game, and for example, CS, it will show you uh, whatever you want it to show. So you can choose health, ammo, uh, kills, uh, if you're blinded by flashbang, um, some really cool things, some ridiculous things, but it's functional and it will actually, it's not just LED for LED, it will actually uh, uh, show you stuff out of the game. So it will read the levels. Also on the back here, these lights, by the way, you can also uh, fully control using GameSense. So he will show you all about that. It's a really cool feature, uh, nobody has it. Uh, honestly, it's for, for, for my opinion, is the best implementation of GameSense yet because it's uh, it's done on not on something I actually cover with my hands, so it's actually very useful. But definitely check it out, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Happy gaming!